Hello, this is Bungalow Bill, and welcome to From the Depths. Today, I will be plunging into the icy cold waters of Meter in order to bring you fresh content from the beta branch, as we will be trying out the new diplomacy mode for the Meter campaign. Now, let us get into a new campaign. I think I will be fine. Please take me to the campaign quest for Meter. Now, I consider the easy spawn to be the canonical spawn. I have already tried it for the beta branch, so I'm going to try out medium. It does put us near the lightning hoods to the start, and they are fantastically wealthy, so sometimes this can be a problem. I know in previous playthroughs I've gotten hit by the Exodine very, very early in. Not a terrifying craft, but when your whole fleet is worth 100,000, it can be a little bit hard to deal with. Now, hard. I do not like because you have a lot of heavily fortified bases like the Iceberg's Logistic Hub right next to you, and they take a long time to kill with starting vehicles, so we will ignore this. And let's begin a new campaign. Now we will start by doing the same thing we always start by doing, which is tearing down the starting craft. However, we do have to wait for the next council meeting before we actually spend our commodities, so I'm just going to go to times 10 and we're going to get right into it. I don't know why it doesn't start straight off with this council meeting. I don't know why it makes you wait the first minute, but here we go. Now, what do we have for options? We can fight either one of our neighbors. What I'm noticing immediately is that we will always be fighting at least one of our neighbors because I believe we do not have the option of crossing through friendly territory, unlike the AIs which means that if we don't have a neighbor to fight, we can't fight anyone. So it's good that it's set up like this. So we can fight either of our neighbors alone. For some reason, we get a lot of commodities for fighting the Lightning Hoods and lose a lot of commodities for fighting the White Flares. We can fight everyone, which gives us a full 16 hours before the next meeting. And just has no commodity rewards at all, which is actually presumably the same as clicking all at war, so I don't know why this is an option. Alternatively, we can try some mixture of these. The issue here is that the Onyx Watch and the Twin Guard are really far away, and they tend to be slow. I do want to try out a fight where we have allies, because that's sort of the whole point in doing this. The problem is most of the people to reinforce me here would do so very slowly. And the Deepwater Guard is not worth nearly this kind of resources. Bribing the White Flares, bribing the White Flares. For some reason we have to bribe the White Flares way more for this option. So anyway, for the first fight, we will just do a one-on-one -on -one against the White Flares. At the next meeting, I would like to pick something that has more allies and enemies, but I don't want to pick a fight against two enemies with very fast vehicles with allies with very slow vehicles. It means that we'll be fighting alone for the entirety of the beginning of the game. And next meeting, two hours, fantastic. We'll get there really quickly. Now, I'm assuming this is the same screen we saw before. The only difference is the Grey Talons are fighting with a Scarlet Dawn. Yep, that's the only difference. We will scroll down for the Continue button and be on our way. Receiving. Now we get to actually spend our commodities, of which we don't have as many as I'd like, but we at least have some. We will replace this fortress, our starting fortress, with a new one as soon as it would like to render the build menu. We'll choose something more suitable for YouTube. Listening. Let's Listening. get this built, Moving out. Receiving. and we'll destroy this. Now, we don't have quite enough resources for the ship I'd like to build. It's a little water skimmer. I'll show it off when we get into battle. Now. It's reasonably tried and tested, unlike the other starting vehicles I'm going to be using. But I want to spawn something that's decently solid in first. And then I'm going to spawn some more experimental craft. So this will take a little bit of time to get built and get some materials for it. We're going to give it to around 3,000 materials, and let's get capturing. 
Now, if we were against the Lightning Hoods, I would just put a resource harvesting ship on this immediately. Since we're against the White Flares, we have to go all the way up here. Now, the issue is we are making such small amounts of money that I don't want to be limited in just capturing these one at a time. So I think I'm, after this first capture, I think I'm just going to go out here and kill it. By that time, I'll have enough money to have another resource gather. Listening. We have no active defenses on this water skimmer. We are entirely reliant on speed. And this thing's kind of near land. So we might not be able to let the AI do its normal thing of just circling the enemy. It might crash us into land. We'll have to see once we get into the fight. Adjust the battle slide Receiving. size all the way up. Put ourselves on the boat. And spawn in. We will pause the game. And this will let us look at our little water skimmer. It's got a muted gray and sand color water scheme that I've been using for my watercraft. All missiles, a variety, variety pack. It's got some small missiles that are just a mixture of EMP, frag, high explosive. They're highly maneuverable. They're designed to take out small planes and that sort of thing. Then we've got medium missiles, which are remote guided or which are remote guided and hash. And these are just designed more to punk out some small craft that can't deal with hash properly, but they're not quite as agile as the small missiles. And then we're fighting the ever so common Flayed Monastery that you get to see plenty. It's already launching its first missiles. They look quite nasty, although the missile firepower doesn't actually turn out to be that much because these are just are just small missiles. For now, I think I'm going to direct it, direct it, direct my water skimmer, the skate, over here, because even though there's enough distance between the Flayed Monastery and the land for it to circle, the pathfinding is a little janky, so I'm not sure how well it would work. We're now within range and are firing our missiles and taking some incoming fire in return. Actually dealt a respectable amount of damage for us for such a early fortress. Now, we've got some EMP mixed in here, and this does not have a lot of EMP defense. This could either end very early or take a long time. There can be a lot of RNG with these early with these early fights. We'll have to make sure that we're that we are staying close enough to actually fire. It looks like we're not. So we better get in closer, otherwise we're just gonna take damage for free. Here we go, firing again, taking incoming fire, actually quite a lot of it. We went in a straight line there. Getting some nice hits off on the Flayed Monastery. Receiving. Yeah, so we're just going to stay circling here. We're going to take all of their missile fire. If you use a longer range craft, this thing, the Flayed Monastery does not have long range missiles. So you can just bombard it from a distance and there's not very much you can do about it. It looks like it can't fire anymore. It's still listed as having missile firepower, so the missile systems are intact, but it's probably AI dead. I can't really ever find the black text, but yeah, it says AI dead over the low health. We'll let that despawn. Receiving. Put our vehicle back into auto mode before we pull it so that we won't forget. Receiving. Listening. But while we're doing that, we're going to send a harvester over here. We'll have to watch out because the white flares will more than likely go and kill it at some point. But this resource patch that we just have obtained is worth so much more, 88 per second than the 32 per second starting one, almost three times as much. We really can't just not have this given how many resources the white flares have compared to us. Wanted to build guillotine. Yeah, guillotine is fairly expensive. And they're approaching the amount that they could build it now if they want to. We could also commerce raid them, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let them collect these resources. The guillotine, I believe, is primarily a ramming craft, so hopefully it won't be that scary for us. Now, instead of... They decided to build a buzzsaw instead. 
45 meters per second, not the fastest. I'm going to slow down time a little bit anyway. We may not complete this capture in time. Receiving. It's a little bit unfortunate. And it means that we are probably going to need more vehicles. Yeah, it looks like this capture is not going to happen in time. So I'm going to go off, abandon this capture at 85%. It's a little bit unfortunate. Move my character over here. And we're going to spawn in. I don't have these in the quick menu because they're still works in progress. I'm going to spawn in the Beetle. It's a little early game airship, primarily based around APS, because I want to mess around with APS on a cheap early game craft. So I decided to decide to build this little guy. Maybe we'll see it in combat, maybe we won't. But I'm going to start using it to do some capture jobs. And we're fast enough that we'll catch up to this buzzsaw in time to in time to fight it off. Trade fleet going out. We might kill this one this time now that we're going up here. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna beat us out. It's going the same speed as us. And it's already gotten far enough. Now the enemy can move in unlimited distance during the deploy screen. Uh, so we're just gonna give it some time. Actually it's not getting as close as I thought it would. I think the buzzsaw actually has some APS guns, so Oh, we don't have a cockpit anymore, so we're just going to chill in the water. Yep, so APS guns. Very lightly armored, I believe. Lots of rams in the white flare style, but at a 45 meters per second top speed, it's not really going to get to us. Mostly APS firepower, a little bit of missiles. It's already dealt us a respectable amount of damage with its guns right at the start. Hopefully we will silence, silence those pretty quickly. Moving to myself when I'm trying to move to my craft, just to see what it's already done. Yeah, just a little bit of armor getting taken off the side. Nice ammo storage. That won't chain react, though. Oh, we've already taken out something critical. It's still firing at us, though. We're probably going to have to go repair after this. Firing missiles underwater. Getting some nice hits in, but nothing too destructive. It might despawn from the going out of control, though, and it's probably having trouble hitting us that hard, firing this distance underwater with a kinetic weapon. I'm surprised it's survived to Hesh this long. Usually white flares craft just explode as soon as anything with Hesh looks at it. But 20% armor cost is reasonably high for a cheap white flares vehicle, so that might be part of the reason. Oh yeah, it's probably highly reliant on some hydrofoils to maintain balance, and it lost them. I know the feeling, I'm using a water skimmer. This thing does... so... This thing, I tried to move to it again. The skate, although it's a water skimmer, it can maneuver without the hydrofoils. If I designed it to do so, it could work purely as a thruster craft. We're going to send it back for repairs. The beetle's fairly economical, so we'll leave it with this amount of resources. We may have to evacuate this vehicle if another enemy comes in. Fortunately, my harvesting vehicle is very fast, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Oh, we're also bringing a lot of resources back with us because we took them all. Lifting. Took them all from here, so I'm actually going to use it to build another beetle for capture jobs. As well as to repair the vehicle, the skate incoming. Set the time back to times 10. Lifting. Moving out. Get this beetle built up pretty quickly. All right, we're going to send the skate back out onto guard duty. We'll capture this one. I don't really want to take all of these down at high Loreham until I have a little bit more power and not in the form of water skimmers because uh, water skimmers are a pain when fighting these coastal fortifications. It can be a little hard to get close enough to fight them without accidentally running yourself aground. I would like to take out some of these trade fleets. They're already starting to accumulate a lot of resources. Receiving. So I should see if I can head one of these off. 
It is going pretty fast. I'm going to have to try to kill it on the way back. Receiving. I really didn't want to do too much commerce raiding, but it seems a little bit as fair. They're completely ignoring me. They should at least acknowledge my presence. Receiving. Well, here we go. I only feel a little bit bad for the white flares. Also, this isn't a completely unarmored, unarmored or unarmed vehicle, so not a war crime. And anyway, if it's a merchant vehicle, they should be surrendering. It's already launching off some missiles. 27 missile firepower, and with our zero active defenses, we're just going to be tanking all those to the face. So hopefully we do okay. I see some hash coming through. Unfortunately, we're hitting the nose. Looks like a giant steam drill coming out the mouth, which um, won't actually do anything. But looks kind of cool anyway. Have to appreciate these crafts to some extent. Let's continue to it getting beaten up. It probably can't take hash damage that well. The White Flares craft rarely can. We're still at 98% health. It just lumped over to the side. A lot of explosive damage, it must have been its ammo compartments. It's down to 90% health. So it's not just a big pile of ammo like some other craft. But that was enough to blow out the engines, so now it's just going down into the water. Now, the unfortunate thing is, we can't fight vehicles in the water. Fortunately, it's despawning now. But... Thankfully, yeah, thankfully it despawned. We're gonna have to leave most of these resources here for now. Moving now. I have too many, too many on the skate to pick up. Set the speed back to times 10, get to capturing. I wanna be able to build stuff out here soon. So I've gotta get my, gotta get my capture jobs underway. I could kill another Flayed Monastery. Let's see, what have they made to kill us this time? Have a Ripper and an Earthraker. Earthraker is a bit expensive, but I don't think it's actually that scary. And they want to build another small vehicle. I don't intend to save Scum, but I should, I should save at this point as... This is from the depths, and sometimes during battles, my vehicles will just teleport out into nowhere, so... Or just randomly explode, but more common for me is that they teleport out to not a number land somewhere, where it is all homogeneously blue, and then the game crashes. It doesn't happen nearly as often as it used to. Missing a little bit of stuff out of the bow. Unfortunately, this isn't our actual AI. It's a little bit of extra processing power for some of the missiles, but it's not the end of the world if we don't have it. Taking a respectable amount of damage from the Earth Ripper. A lot of damage from the Earth Ripper. Actually, we can't afford to get killed by it and salvaged. We won't have anything left. Don't know why our missiles are having so much trouble. Anyway, it's nose diving into the water. I decided to give them a little bit of a little bit of guidance help, but it doesn't seem to be helping. Also, we're circling way too close. Oh, we might just crash into it and die. That was really close. We're definitely having some guidance issues on our craft. When small craft take damage, it's very hard to keep them from getting out of control like this. That's going to be a lot of damage to us. We just flew right into its rams. Fortunately, we're not just dead, but it's not great. We're taking off into space now. It'd be safest if I turned off the engines on my craft. In either case, I'm going to have to send it back to base to heal back up. If it didn't lose some internal controls, it would probably be a bit more <laughs> a bit more effective in an aircraft than this. Receiving. 
I'd like to pick these up, but have no room for it. We should still be faster than the Ripper, yeah, 77 meters per second. Moving now. Lifting. Moving out. All right, one of our little airships should probably be able to fight off the Ripper, but we might have to might have to abandon our base as well and bring it back. Moving out. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have to do a full retreat until we've repaired the skate. I don't know if this is going to count as being defended or not, but we'll give that a try. Skate's taking a while to come in. I've got these resources pooled together, so I might build something a little bit more interesting. Lifting. Oh, this isn't done building. This is going to be... This is going to be a little unfortunate. We're probably just going to get wrecked. That's That's not great. Well, we've got both of our guns. Um, yeah, so we're just missing this outer layer of blocks. We're missing a missile launcher, a missile launcher. So not great from that respect. But we have we have some of our APS components. We're missing some other APS components. I believe we should have more APS firepower than that. Oh, we have no detection. We'll have to rely on Rambot to aim. We're probably just going to get wrecked, though. Oh, we'll come out and kill us with something better. Okay, I only have so much patience. Usually I don't use Rambot to fight at all, but... Come on. This is really the Somali pirate simulator. And I don't really have trouble with losing a small craft like this early in the game, but I only have so much patience if it's going to take them this long to kill me. Well, it looks like we're dead. Yep, they got us. Receiving. Our not fully completed craft did not fare that well. Moving out. Did I finish building this one? Yeah, I don't know how that happened to me. I really wish that you could rally vehicles. Receiving. Moving now. Lifting. Moving out. I don't want to fight too close to this and get them both dragged in. Receiving. Receiving. Oh, we'll just murder this. I've had enough of the Ripper. So, in the pre-fight screen, it was going for my beetle, but that was because it was following the, the fleet AI, and then the vehicle AI takes over and changes targets afterwards. Yeah, it's dead. I can't take any EMP. Craft the small really can't take very much. Lifting. Should build something Moving out. a little more interesting, so we'll pick all of Moving. these up. Lifting. And we'll start building something in, in the meantime. We will build... Do I want to build the dandelion or the other dandelion? We'll build the other dandelion. Alright, so... Don't know how to pronounce this. It's a real little guy. We'll make it come out from the shore a little more. Now we'll just fight it. It'll come out from the shore in the battle screen. Let it come out. Let it come out. All right, we're good. Begin battle. Make sure that we're using our combat AI. Check what this guy is. 50 APS. Well, it's dead. Felt us 1%. Should check that what those shells were. They're probably some small... 
frag or something, I don't know. Moving out. Receiving. Moving now. Actually, we need to expand our area of influence a bit. Get back to some more mining. So they need to build another trade fleet, or these just aren't going to be doing anything. Wanted to build Flayed Monastery as a dead blueprint for Harvest Job. Oh, it must be for this. They don't have anything to build it with anyway. Listening. Okay, we can leapfrog yeah. these two. Listening. The other dandelion looks like it's finished building. Moving out. So I can send it out here for some materials. All right, the skate can come back out here for defense. Actually, I'm going to have it pick up some of these resources. Listening. Moving out. Now, the thing is, we start so close to the Gorgon. It looks like we're not going to kill it within the first two hours. I do want to at least get these two so that I can declare peace. Listening. Moving out. Although, we're probably going to be quite deep in enemy territory. So Moving now. if the white flares do declare, or if we do get into a council meeting in the next hour, we're not going to have much of a choice but to fight. Now yeah, we've let the lightning heads take some of our space. Looks like the gray talons yeah, so the Great Talons and the Scarlet Dawn are the only AIs that are really doing anything right now, other than the ones that we're fighting, I believe. Make sure this is just a standard Flayed Monastery. It is. I don't really want to risk the additional 25,000 materials on, on the skate, but we're doing it. The White Flares are nasty, nasty people anyway. We might take a, even a little bit more missile fire now that we're circling like this. I should really use a vehicle that, you know, fights a little bit further away or does something to not take this incoming fire back, but we should still win pretty handily anyway. This EMP damage is pretty brutal for the Flayed Monastery. We took 4% damage. These are these hatches are opening again though, so they're firing. So as we can always retreat if we have to, but we're getting some reasonable EMP damage in. Where did my glass go? I don't really like how obstructive the, the water effect is. It's not awful, but it's not great either. I could really do without it. They still have all their missile firepower. We're actually down a pretty substantial amount of health. I should probably switch broadsides. Looks like we've lost an ammo compartment. This is before I started using the smaller ammo storages and mixing them in a bit better with the armor. But it's AI dead. We've got them. Gotta repair again though. There's something this small made out of lightweight alloy that isn't dodgy enough to not take missile hits. We're going to take some damage. We'll repair here once the capture's done. I'm not sure the white flares are really going to put out much of another ship. I'm going to try to stay at war with them after the council meeting, though, because, well... They're just pushovers at this point. It's just free real estate. Have we finished this beetle yet? 37%, not even close. Man, captures take forever. Listening. Moving out. Well, this is unfortunate. A charger. I don't know what this is. Not that expensive. Hopefully we'll be fine even with a crippled skate. Listening. I believe that is enough from the depths for one night.
We have another vehicle, the other dandelion, waiting in the wings for its first sortie at the beginning of the next episode, along with our first council meeting. I hope you've enjoyed watching us in our quest for Eater, and I hope to see you again soon in From the Depths.